Raekwon, early in the year, I remember you came out here and I think it was after one of those 15, 16 tackle games. And the number that you pointed to was that you missed two in that game. <laughs> Do you know how many you missed this season? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I think I missed about six or seven. I think. Six or seven? Yeah, six or seven in the season. Does that bother you? Is that number good? How do you? How would you evaluate that number? Uh, I feel like I shouldn't miss any, like I said last time. But uh, not too bad. But <laughs> I just feel like I shouldn't miss any. Is that a better, better way to measure the success of a linebacker than the, the sheer volume of tackles? Is looking at how many plays that they could have made that they didn't. Uh, yeah, for me that that's how I, that's how I look at my play. Uh, every play that I think I could have made that I didn't make, I feel like that's a bad play on my end, and I feel like I got to make up for it or not. But uh, yeah, that's how I look at it in my standpoint. When you look at the season as a whole, and not just with tackles, but the way you progressed this year from from year one to year two, how far do you think you've you've come? How much further do you still have to go? You know. Uh, Throughout the year and throughout last year, it was all about building trust in my, from my teammates. You know, as a Mike linebacker, you can't be out there as one of the guys, just one of the guys. You have to be out there as a leader, the quarterback of the defense. And I think throughout the year, they uh, had more trust in me and everything that I said on the field, they really took it and they really went, went with it. But when I was a freshman, I really couldn't say much because I was just putting my feet in the water at first. So they wanted to see what I could do and prove myself. Is there a part of you that approaches this, you know, bowl practice? You guys have one more game together, but if Darren leaves along with Joshua and you are the holdover, I mean, you're going to be probably you're in the middle of it next year anyway. But is there something to this month where you're trying to lay some groundwork for next year? You know, uh, bowl practice is definitely a time for, to develop young guys. Also, I mean, it's leading into the spring ball, but uh, our focus for the last couple of days has really been to uh, about Notre Dame and the stuff that they'll try to do to us. But it's definitely a time to try to develop young guys. They've been getting a lot of practice time lately. I mean, we got a couple linebackers just dinged up, uh, but you know, it's, we can see the development throughout the whole team. I think you're the only defensive player that we're talking to today that's actually going to play for Shiano. What do you know about him? You know, uh, he's, what I've from what I've heard, he's just like Coach Ash to where he's, uh, real demanding on what he says and a uh, real fiery type guy who gets into his players and uh, really passionate about the stuff that he does on the field and off the field. So uh, that's what I got from him, just a passionate guy. And when I got to talk to him for a little time that I did, he seemed to be a real cool guy. When you first heard the news that he was coming on staff, what was your reaction? You know, I had to Google him. Uh, I mean, I knew who he was, but I, I Googled him and see like his track record, uh, Tampa Bay, Rutgers, and stuff like that. But, you know, I heard he was pretty cool with Coach Meyer, and Coach Meyer says he's a good coach, so I guess he is. <laughs> you have a, a former NFL head coach as, a, as an assistant coach on the staff? Yeah, I mean, it, it just gives a different perspective. You know, stuff about your game personally, you can ask him about and ask him about some of the guys that he's seen in the NFL and just – uh try to better your game personally. But as a team-wise, he, he's seen some of the best teams, played against some of the best teams in the NFL, so he knows what he's talking about. You mentioned that you started the last few days kind of honing in, focusing on Notre Dame. What, from what you've seen of them, what you're working on, what do you got to be ready for in a couple of weeks? They're, they're putting up some big numbers offensively or did this season. What what jumps out at you, I guess, about that? You know, they have a real physical offensive line. You know, they have two NFL caliber uh, tackles and one that's going top three, I think, or something like that. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, that's that's the main thing that we have to worry about because it, if they can dominate the line of scrimmage, then obviously they can uh, move the ball on this. But really, I've just been paying attention to their offensive line. You know, the skilled players are going to do what they do. They got a nice receiver, and they got a young quarterback, but uh, the offensive line to me. Um, how do you look at a bowl trip, Raekwon, you know, going to Arizona for whatever, a week, a few days before the game? Is for you, is it all business? Do you like to have fun? How, how do you strike that balance when you're out there and you have a game to play, but you know it is supposed to be kind of fun for you guys? Yeah, I mean, you can have, you go out there, you're supposed to have fun. Last year on our national championship run, we had a lot of fun, but when it was time to lock in, I think all the guys really did a good job of locking in and uh, focusing on the game. Urban, and Tyvis said Urban is making an effort to make practices 
fun, to, to lighten the mood a little bit. Have you noticed that? And if so, how's he done it? Uh, yeah, man. I mean, at the end of every, every practice, we have a little challenge for the young guys. Or We started off with going circle drill with the young guys, just to lighten things up because, you know, throughout the whole season, we had a lot of pressure and we were all tensed up. And we're, we were, what, 10 and 0, and everybody thought, everybody was acting like we were 5 and 5 or something like that. So, uh, I mean, it's just been a, lot, a very lightened bowl practice uh, spree, but I think we still work even harder than we did during the season. Have any of you guys been giving Coach Ash a, Ash a hard time? Once uh, the clock's hit zero, he's a big ten, 10 East rival now. Uh, no, I, we, we haven't really been giving him a hard time, but he knows the time was coming. Like right after the game, we're gonna give him. We're gonna give him. We're gonna give it to him. <laughs> right after the game, yeah. like on the on the field. Yeah, maybe on on the field and on the plane and all that type stuff. <laughs> One of the things that uh, we hear, you know, from people is, boy, is this team going to be motivated for this game, you know, because your aspirations were higher. Uh, a lot of the guys are saying that's not a problem at all with Notre Dame out there. Just what is your sense? Is this team ready to go and will be ready to go in a couple of weeks? Yeah, the expectation isn't always – I mean, it's always a national championship, but from the, from the jump, from the foundation, our expectation is always to win. So you never go into a game looking to lose. So that's that's I feel like that's not a problem going to this game because every game that we play and that we step on the field and that we strap our pads on, we feel like we should win. Raquan, how do you feel like the defense overall through this season, I know you have a game left, but has played? Did it play? I mean the stats are pretty good, the stats are even better than last year. How did did it play to the level overall that you wanted this defense to play to? You know, at times we gave up big plays when they schemed us up pretty good at the beginning of the game. But as the game, as every game went on, you know, we seemed to get a feel for what they were trying to do, trying to do to us, and then stop it. You know, other than uh, how many times I don't, I don't even know how many times we gave up 100 yards rushing. But you know, once we figured out what the team was trying to do to us, other than running quarterbacks, I think that's been our weakness all year. But I mean, we really locked down and really did our thing all season. I know Coach Fickle was just saying that, you know, if a defense doesn't play together and if guys aren't unselfish and stuff, then it doesn't matter how much talent you have. It's not going to work. And he, fe he felt this defense did a good job playing together this year. But can you just sort of speak to what the talent level is of this defense when you guys take the field? I mean, we know how many guys who are on this defense are going to wind up playing in the NFL someday. Can you maybe put it in perspective a little bit of, like, what it's really like when you the 11 guys you put out there each game? You know, I always put it in perspective as, like, I'm the middle linebacker, and I'm in the middle of some of the best athletes in the nation. I got two safeties that are going to play in the NFL. Like, two cornerbacks is definitely going to be some of the top draft picks. My whole D-line is going to go. And the guys right beside me are NFL caliber linebackers. So I feel like we just bring the best out of each other while we're on the field. and. Competit the competitiveness that we have just brings the, the sheer talent out of all of us. And you have, like, you you can sort of feel that in the moment. Sometimes, yeah. like, you sort of look around and can realize, man, like, yeah. Darren and some of the Joey Some of those talented plays that they made, some of the tremendous plays that they make, man, you just get it. It's like a wow factor sometimes. But uh, once you get down to it and see these guys do it in practice almost every day, it's, it's becomes common. That thing about the running quarterbacks being a weakness, is that something you can fix before the bowl game? Plan on having it fixed? Yeah, we're going we to have it fixed. Uh, I mean, I feel like it, it was fixed. I mean, you just if you think about our scheme, if you know anything about the quarters match concept that we run, you know that the quarterback run game is sort of a weakness. A couple more, please. Anyone else? Have you been to Arizona? Before? Yeah, I've been to Arizona. Phoenix area. How? Why? Uh, my family went out there one time. I don't know why we went out there. Hey, Raekwon, I, I asked some of the guys being in the year about their jersey number. How does a linebacker end up with number five? What, what's this backstory? There? How does a linebacker end up with number five? Uh, I came here early in January of 2014, and I said I wanted number two. But I got in here, and they had number five on, so I guess that's what it is. I, I didn't. I didn't never ask for it. I just went with it because I didn't want to be the five-star guy complaining about his number. So I just went with it. Yeah. Just like the single digit, or what? What was the allure with two or five? No, I was gonna wear 42 or 
too. Oh, okay, I got you. Because I wore 42 in high school, but I got here and they gave me five, so I just went with it. You wore two briefly, right? Yeah, I wore two because Jeff Hyreman played. Oh, we were both on punt team. Yeah. Yeah, so. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Right, Did they give you five because you're a five star? No. <laughs> <laughs>